connection with mine tonight. Put both of those hands together and in an amazing new birth way. Would you welcome Dr. David Anderson? Come on, give him some praise. God is good. Now, this is a call and response tonight, man. Come on, y'all. God is good. And all the time. I said, God is good. And all the time. All right. Um, I'm, I'm first, I want to I wanna say thank you to a series of people to create this opportunity for tonight. Um, Chris Boyd over at Word of Faith uh, created an opportunity for me to speak there a number of years ago at the Economic Empowerment Conference with T.D. Jakes and Pastor Paula White and a whole bunch of notoriety, big name speakers. I had did a piece there called There Are No More Jobs in uh, 2011. The church called back a couple of weeks ago and said that they wanted to recreate that No More Jobs. They wanted to do an update to No More Jobs. And so I called Michael Roberts, who's been a heavy influence on my entrepreneurial career. I called George Frazier. I called a number of other people that we work with through the Black Speakers Bureau, and they put on this event at the church. And some kind of way through Hashim and Zynga, um, Quincy calls on me to come here tonight. So through a series of odd events, we get here tonight to present to you this information that I, I believe is life-changing. I think to be broke is, is an abomination. And, and matter of fact, if you if you read the Jewish benevolent law, and I'm not trying to push Judaism, but if you read in the Torah, Jews believe that it's an abomination to be a tenant. They got rules on how long you should be renting. The rules only go for 36 months. My mom is still in New York renting. She's been at the same spot for 47 years. I love you, mom. I know you're watching, but you've been paying $1,500 a month for 47 years. $1,500 a month, the last time I calculated was $60,000 times 47 years is over a million five that she's given to Albanians and Jews and other people outside of our community. But the Jews believe that it's an abomination to be a tenant. That's in their Bible. That's in their religion. That's what they believe. It's, a, it's an abomination. They also believe that you got to own land. The black man has to own land. Jamal's in Baltimore before he came down here. Freddie Gray situation, let's just think about this. Not to get all political on you before we get into what it is that we gotta teach tonight, but let's think about this. When you own land, right, where do your taxes go? Where do your real estate taxes go? They go to two places. They go for education and law enforcement. Education and law enforcement. If black folks own land, they would be paying real estate taxes to who? Law enforcement. They'd have a relationship with who? Law enforcement. There would be no need or ability for somebody to run up in the hood and shoot you five times in the back because you would have a what? Relationship with law enforcement. In fact, I believe that if we really wanted to get serious about stopping folks from shooting us in the back five and six, seven, eight times, every black man under the sound of my voice in America would be overinsured for five, ten million dollars. So the next time they shoot you in the back five, ten times, guess what? Somebody got to pay. Trump himself would issue an edict, stop shooting Negroes. Think about this. It's all about finances. It's the economy of God. And when we get into the economy of God, we think about Jesus Christ, the master. There's only a few accounts in the book that I know that Christ acted outside of himself. What are those accounts, class? There's a number of accounts, but one, one comes to mind in the temple of the holies of holies. And the account says that the Hebrew shekel coin, which was supposed to be $5, got hyperinflated by the money changers. These dudes was outside the temple. They was inflating the money. And it says Christ got angered. Now, let's think about this, class. Christ got angered over what? He got angered because the money changers inflated the money so that the black Jews, because they was black folks at the time, to make them pay more to enter into the temple to pray to their God. And the account says what? 
They turn tables over. They bust people in the head over the matter of black economics. This is Jesus Christ, man. Somebody who's in check of his emotions. He got angered. So my question, class, before we begin, is why are we not angry about our financial position in America right now? Where's that, that holy unrest about our condition as black people? Where are we at as Christians, as black men in America? Where are we at over the condition of our finances? Where are we, class? So I didn't come here to, uh, you know, throw nobody under no bus. I love y'all. I really do, man. I love black people, man. But it's time that we stop playing these games with our economics. It's time that we stop allowing people who don't look like us. This ain't a racist, isolationist talk. It's time to stop these people from coming into our community and absorbing all the resources. Stop it. I'm not saying don't do business with them, but if they're gonna come into our community, they gotta benefit the community. They cannot come in and ravage the community and leave. It can't happen no more. So what do we do, class? What do we do? What are the solutions? How do we move forward in this? If you didn't know, you gotta invest. And let me just, before I even get into my talk, let me just say this. Let me give you a reason to invest if you don't have one. A lot of people say, oh, Dr. Anderson, I know I'm supposed to invest, but what you want me to invest in? In 1865, it says that, or the history lesson that they teach us is that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. This is what they tell us, right? And then they further say that Lincoln put some things on the books to undergird the economics of black people. He put some laws on the books that would create a freedman's bank where we could go and get loans. They said that we would get 40 acres and a mule to be able to give us the land that we needed to be able to build and create agriculture and do all these other things. But every president, five presidents after Lincoln died, they undergirded and went in and gutted all of those policies. So guess what we got, class? Zero. We got goose eggs. But that's all right. We got goose eggs. But check this out. Here's the reason why you should invest. They told us we would get the 40 acres and a mule. It never happened. During that time in 1865, 40 acres and a mule was about $20 million. 2019, that 40 acres never came. $20 million in 1865 plus penalties, principal, and interest, it's about $43 trillion right now. Divided by the 42 million black folks in America means I'm due $27 million right now. I'm due it. I'm due it. So if you didn't have a reason to invest, if you didn't have a reason, black folks, you're due $27 million by your government. They ain't giving it to you. So what's your plan to get your $27 million that you do? What's the plan? You're going to invest on the Forex? Come on, man. That's way too sophisticated to be jumping out here trying to get on some Forex right now. You got to do what God told you to do, and it's a mandate. He said to possess the land. That's what God said. That's his word. <laughs> he said... Possess the land, furthermore, class, and subdue it. That's God's word. So, Brother Anderson, what you got going on today? Well, I'm struggling, I'm surviving, I'm this, I'm that. Possess the land, black man. You gonna tell me the people in Flint still got unclean water? Come on. Who does this? They got something on the internet called an atmospheric water generator. It takes the water out the air, sends it in the ground goes through three or four chambers through condensation, gives out clean water. You telling me ain't nobody got no atmospheric water generators in Flint? Come on, man, they sending y'all plastic bottles. Everybody know that plastic bottles got BPH in them every time the sun hit them. It's, it's contaminated water. But people getting behind this, man. Come on, man. You own land, you could drill down on your land in Georgia 400 feet, you hitting your water table. You got clean water. Those are water rights. Those are basic rights from land ownership. The black man don't own no land. Not in the numbers that we need to, to affect change. I came here tonight to talk to y'all about opportunity. Let's get into it. The Chinese symbol for danger, anybody know what it is? They call it the yin and the yang. It's this black symbol with a little white dot and a white symbol with a little black dot. And in Mandarin, it's translated as crisis and opportunity. 
That's the symbol. That's what it means. And right now, we're in an opportunity. The biggest opportunity of real estate history right here in Atlanta, and I'm going to break it down to you all right now tonight. By a show of hands, class, does anybody know what an opportunity zone is? Show of hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, less than 1% of the room. It's a teachable moment. 2017, the United States tax code was ratified to include something called opportunity zones in the United States. What these opportunity zones used was information that was collected in the census data track. And it identified houses that were in need of investment. It identified areas, communities in need of investment. And what they stated was, if you, real estate investor or investor, invest in these zip codes, invest in these opportunity zones, and they have an opportunity map, Man, y'all better pull out some phones. Y'all better pull out some notes because I'm about to drop like million dollar strategies right now. Should nobody be broke when I'm done talking right now? They said in the tax code that we would give you mitigation strategies. Mitigation vis-a-vis -vis means for every dollar that you put in the ground, you're getting a dollar back that you can write down on your tax return. How many people in here owe the IRS? Let's just keep it 100%. I owe the feds. Come on, man. At the top of the year, earlier this year, I owed 450 grand. My CPA cut it in half, 225, I still owe right now. And I'm telling you all about these opportunity zones because when I learned about the opportunity zones, I was like, oh man, all of this property that we invested in, I, I might get a refund. <laughs> so let me, let me clarify. The opportunity zone says that for every dollar you invest, you get a dollar back. So if you invest a million dollars in your own community, guess what? You can write that down on your taxes, man. But what are we doing? We're trying to claim our baby mom. Hey, baby, how you doing? Can I get Junior's uh, social security number there? Who does that? When you can invest in your own community, man, you could buy a tax lien for $10,000 and still use that $10,000 write-off on your own taxes. Shouldn't nobody owe the IRS in here. We should all be looking for opportunity zones. These are the zones that allow us to invest and build our community. Georgia film credits. Anybody know what's going on in Georgia right now? Okay, there's 37 films being shot right now. 37. Thank you. 37 films being shot in the state of Georgia. 37. The film credits are the highest that they've ever been in anybody's state. They're 37%. That means for every film dollar that's being spent here, 37% of it can be written down on taxes. And it doesn't necessarily have to be applied to film corporations. We're also talking about the United States Virgin Islands Economic Development Credit. Does anybody know about this? Okay. Let me tell you about this USVI EDC. And one thing that you can bank on me on is you can fact check me. You could go to Google and fact check me as it's coming out my mouth. Fact check me. USVI, United States Virgin Islands, EDC, Economic Development Credit, Section 934, United States Tax Code. You know what it says? Let me break it down for you. It says for $100,000, and oh, mind you, the uh, Virgin Islands is an entire opportunity zone, and so is Puerto Rico. They just named the whole island, St. Thomas, and parts of Christianstead, an opportunity zone. So if you buy some land there, not only can you write it down, but you can also hire three to five people on the island. You make a $100,000 investment in the island. And guess what, class? They give you 90% tax forgiveness 30 years. 30 years. USVI tax code section 934. This is US tax code. This ain't no sovereign man strategy. This ain't no new Wabian strategy. This ain't no, what was the brother uh, went to jail? What's his name? Wesley Snipes. You're going to tell me Wesley Snipes went to jail on a federal level and argue he was a Nuwabian that traced his lineage to Sacagawean and it was said he was a sovereign man, didn't want to pay no taxes. Government locked him up, threw the key away. You're going to tell me nobody on Wesley Snipes' team knew about Section 934, United States Tax Code? This is an act of Congress. What's the problem here? The problem is we're not getting the information. And then when we get the information, because we live in an information age class, Ain't nobody trying to tell black people or teach black people how to utilize this information or synthesize the information correctly. I got a problem with that. That's, I got an issue with that. 
We in the middle of a government shutdown, all these crazy things going on. Let's talk about this S&P 500 right quick before we get into what we're getting into. And this is very important. We're in a historical high. This is the highest that the S&P 500 has ever been in United States history. If you don't believe me, go do the history lesson for yourself. Started in 1901. In 1913, there was the big crash. It went down how many points, class? 7,000 points. It went going an upward trend until about 1980, 1979, 1981, when the Carter administration had the oil crisis. That crisis only dropped 4,000 points, class. Went back up on an upward trend to year 2000. Dot-com crash was only 3,500 points, class. Then it continued on an upward trend to 2009. 2009, with the real estate crash, was only 5,000 points. The S&P 500 right now is at 22,000 currently. Do you all know how much it's going to drop the next time it drops? It's going to drop 10,000 points minimum. And all black people that I know has got their nest eggs tied up in this stuff and don't even got no insurance to mitigate it. Which means when it drops, who's losing? We are. Everybody in this church is losing. Unless you got some Lords of London put around your entire insurance policy or whatever you invested in to cover your, your loss as the market goes down. Ain't nobody talking to black people about putting cover call insurance around their investments. That's some high level white boy stuff. Some security, um, what do you call them? SEC accredited investor stuff. We're not getting that information and that's the information that's gonna keep us, man. So let's get into some tangible strategies that we can do right now because this is the game right now. The game is the 401k is not working and let me show you why. Because when they tell you, class, you put the $1,000 in and the master meets you or Mr. Charlie meets you another $1,000, that's $2,000 a month. $2,000 a month times 12 is only $24,000. Even if you give Mr. Charlie 10 years, you only got $240,000 sitting for you when you retire. And not to mention the interest rates are the cheapest they've ever been. We don't know what they're going to be in 10, 20, 30 years. They're going to be high as all get out. So it's cheaper now. Right? It's cheaper now to do what? Pay taxes. It's just, it's just the cheapest it's ever been. But we ain't looking at it like this. Ain't nobody sitting down telling us, yo, this is what we got to do. We got to move our money and re invest in real estate and opportunity zones and get the tax benefit from it so that we don't have to pay taxes. This is, this is stuff that's in the basic code. The 401k where I'm getting to is even if you stayed on the job for 10 years and you only got $240,000, Susie Orman is saying we need five million to retire. You need five million not to have to go work at Walmart. Why is this 73 year old black woman at Walmart on Wesley Chapel talking about good day, young man? What's up with that? I'm coming in here to get supplies for my team, and she greeting me. 73 years old, she greeting me at the walk at the Home Depot, man. Poor planning, and that has to stop, man. Not on my watch, man that we're not going to be ready for whatever's coming up, whatever this man got for us. So we got to invest, man. Let me talk to you all about some investment strategies, the how behind the investment strategy. Anybody know anything about a self-directed IRA? Hands up. Self-directed IRA? All right. If you don't know, you need to order this book. It's called the Self-Directed IRA Handbook. I'm going to say it again. Self-Directed IRA Handbook. This book right here teaches you how to move funds off the market so that you can invest and you can take your own investments. You don't have to go sit down with your FA. You don't have to sit down with your FA and your FA tell you, oh, well, Dr. Anderson, what you got me in, man? Well, Dr. Anderson, we got you in some softs. We got you in some hards. We got you in some emerging markets. Nah, what you got me in, yo? What you putting my money in? Well, you know, the CCA is the best investment in the planet right now. CCA, you talking about that Michael Jordan stuff? You talking about that corrections Corporation of America? You talking about the prison industrial complex? Morgan Stanley, you gonna put me? D Dr. David Anderson, the most pro-Negro brother talking about prison industrial reform? You gonna put me in the CCA? Cause, oh yeah, Dr. Anderson's a great investment. He'll give you 10% annually. But most of us don't know this. How many of us are having these kinds of conversations with the FA? How many of us are breaking it down? Yo, Vanguard, moves your money into the CCA. How many people are really going into their portfolios and their stock receipts and looking at what you're investing in? Come on, man. This is the game. This is the game that they're playing on us. And it's, it's time that this stops, man. So all we got to do is take a little bit of time and think about how we can use these 
vehicles to our benefit. So we talked about the self-directed IRA. Self-directed IRA allows you to move money from the market into your own self-directed IRA that you can put into an LLC to buy real estate or start a business. And let me say this, because they always lie to y'all telling you, well, you know you can't pull your money out because you're going to get hit with penalties and interest. Stop the press, man. The rule, the last time I checked, and you could download this on Google, like I said, fact check me. The rule says you can download under 59 and a half for two reasons. The first reason is what, class? Start a business. The second reason is to what, class? Invest in real estate. More specifically, tax lien certificates. So let me ask you a question. How is it that all these black people are in here, they got some kind of money in retirement, but we still go into Bank of America begging for a loan to start our business. We still go into SBA talking about, please give me the guarantee, sir, when we got all of this money available to get our own money to start our own businesses, but we don't know nothing about a self-directed IRA. Come on. Come on. This man, this has to stop, which is why Jamal probably called me here, and I'm very appreciative for the opportunity. Let's talk about this. Well, Dr. Anderson, you got some great ideas. But where can I get some money to invest in these big ideas you're talking about? Every speaking engagement, I mean every one. Somebody mama done died. Somebody granddaddy died. Somebody mama, daddy, somebody died. And quiet is kept. They sitting on 250, 500 million plus. You don't know nothing about it. You know why? Because these women ain't saying, you know daddy left me a million dollars. They not saying that. They don't say nothing until they see somebody that understands placement. And after every speaking engagement, when well, Dr. Anderson, I need to talk to you now. You know I need to talk to you. Blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. What am I getting at? The number one resource before we go to Bank of America, before we go to all of these other institutions, depository institutions, and oh, by the way, church class, the, the usury fee in the book is, is wickedness, right? So Bank of America charges you an NSF fee, the usury fee, that's wickedness. Because the last time I read it, the book says, don't lend money to, well, lend money to your brother and not charge your brother interest. But Bank of America charges you interest. That's not your brother. They charge NSF, you, you went over a penny, $36. Usury, oh, but I got direct deposit with the bank. <laughs> Usury, we not taking God at his word. We playing. Capital advancement, insurance money, we just broke that down. Let's talk about E2 investment. Anybody know what E2 is? <sighs> Teachable moment. Teachable moment. Foreign nationals come into this country. You can fact check me, Google me. In fact, go to YouTube and type in EB5 E2 programs. Let me break down E2 and how dope this is. The foreign nationals come into the country. They talk, Trump talking about build a wall. Let me show you how fake this is. This is a 30-year program. If you don't believe me, you could go to the ILA conference, which stands for American Immigration Law Association. They have a conference in D.C. every year downtown, and they talk about this issue of the matching between U.S. entrepreneurs and foreign nationals. United States entrepreneurs and foreign nationals. What are we talking about? How to get money without having to go to the bank. The foreign nationals are looking for what class? U.S. entrepreneurs that they can invest in. We ain't talking no credit score. We ain't talking no collateral, putting your house up. All we're talking about is having a business plan and finding somebody who speaks Chinese, or excuse me, Mandarin, Cantonese, or they might be from Mumbai, or they might be from Qatar, and they're looking to invest. And the rule says on the E2 program, anywhere from a, a significant investment is the language, anywhere from $150,000 to $500,000. Why are there people who haven't started their businesses? Oh, well, you know, Dr. Anderson, it's real hard because I, I can't find the money. You know, the bank, you know, I got a felony, Dr. Anderson. You know, my credit score, you know, my wife divorced me, Dr. Anderson. You know, I had that bankruptcy, Dr. Anderson. The E2 program ain't caring about none of that. All they saying is, well, U.S. business with a business plan 
investment. Somewhere in the number between $150,000 to a half a million dollars. And every business that I've ever started, from the laundry net that appeared in the uh, Blind Side, the movie The Blind Side, the one of Oscar, my laundry mat was in there, from the Empowerment Radio Network, Warren Ballantyne, Roland Martin, Bev Smith, uh, Les Brown, all of these people, to the real estate group partners, every business that I've ever started, I've never need more than $50,000 to get started. So if I've never needed more than 50 grand to get started, and I've had the most amazing run in entrepreneurship, and you could go to YouTube and type my name in and see it, I know you don't need no half a million dollars to get your business started. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to act like, you know, I'm all of that, but I know $50,000, you can make a million dollars in 24 months, period. That's just what it is. Let's just keep it 100. I'm not done. Hold up. We teaching now, man. EB5. Class, show of hands, EB-5 program. Okay. There's a, anybody been to L.A.? All right. So when you, when you land in L.A., the Marriott has this, this complex called L.A. Live. It's like a, it's like a, a residence in, a Fairfield Inn, and something else. It's like three hotels in one. They call it L.A. Live, right? My homeboy, Kevin Hicks, did this deal. Y'all know how Kevin put this deal together? I met Kevin at Mr. Roberts has this event every year called Nab Hood. Y'all need to write this down. For anybody in here want to own a hotel? Y'all saw Mr. Roberts in here like a week and a half ago. He just installed Jamal. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mr. Roberts is a billionaire. He got big, long money, super long money, right? Filed a bankruptcy, still got paid. Got paid on the way down, all right? Straight up. Mr. Roberts is the chair for the National Association of black hotel owner operators and developers. He's got a conference that happens every year in Miami at the Biscayne Bay Hotel. This is where the money goes down, okay? This is the conference to be at if you're trying to own hotels. Why is this important? Because I was telling you about Kevin Hicks and how Kevin Hicks was building this Marriott Hotel, the LA Live. You know how he raised $100 million to build that hotel? EB-5 money. And guess where they had an EB-5 class to teach you how to use those investments and how to raise the money? NAB hood. We ain't going to the conferences. We going to Essence. Oh, girl, you know I got to see Frankie Beverly and Mays at Essence. But ain't nobody at NAB hood? And they talking about the EB-5 program? And how these foreign nationals, these Chinese foreign nationals, in order for them to get entrance into this country, instead of them building a wall, instead of them having to wait 40 years, you're going to tell me Slick Rick, the ruler, waited 40 years to get naturalized, to become a U.S. citizen? These people put up a million dollars, and they instantaneously get a green card. Instantly. Ain't nobody waiting no 40 years. And then when you... American entrepreneur, when you create the 10 jobs that you agree to create for every million that they give you, guess what? That green card becomes permanent. But they ain't teaching you this, man, at the Georgia State School of Business. They're not teaching you this at Morris Brown College. Why? Because the professor don't know. The professor is trading his time for money. The professor gave up on his dream, so he said, oh, heck it, I'ma just teach. Professor ain't made no million dollars. He ain't filed no K-1s. He don't have no EDC credits. He ain't doing million dollar deals. Tens and twenties and hundred million dollar deals. The professor doesn't know. And I'm not taking a shot at education. Anybody that does the history on who I am and what I represent, you'll know that my mother started and was one of the fundraisers for the Upward Bound program. Google that. Wrote the grant. Father went to Harvard. Taught up there. So I'm not shooting at education, but what I am saying is very simple. Gone are the days of us taking out loans, student loans, to pay for curriculum, and I write curriculums. It takes 10 years to perfect. Gone are the days for me to go get a student loan, to go get in front of somebody who ain't never made no million dollars to teach me on a dated curriculum that took 10 years to make, and I'm taking out a student loan to pay interest on that when I get out, I can't find a job to even service the debt. Gone in those days. Stop telling your kids to pay for the school using student loans. Stop it. David Jr. attends Middlebury College just on the internet. You can type in Dr. David, and uh, David Anderson Jr. David Jr. graduates next February 2020. Speaks three languages from Middlebury College. No loans. Not one. Not one. 
You want to be successful? Let's start here. I got some rules for success. Thou shalt not have a mortgage. Write that down. Write it down. I'm not being sacrilegious, Jamal. Thou shalt not have, not have a mortgage. What's the etymology on the word mortgage? Come on, class. You know what it is? Latin, more to fifth, means death. Second word means what? Engage. It's an engagement until death. But we signing up for 30, 40, 50 years for these mortgages. Talking about, I think I'm going to sign grandmama up for the reverse mortgage. Are you serious? So these people can come and take the equity that grandma worked so hard to get? You're going to just give it to these people? This country is about equity. And I started to talk in 1965 or 1865 telling you we are owed 27 million and it's due. But we're going to keep giving our equity away to these people. Thou shalt not have a mortgage, you want to be successful. Y'all brothers that got families, y'all out here hustling, trying to make your dream happen, and you coming up short, and your wife looking at you like you crazy. Negro, get a job. But you trying. You trying hard. You trying to connect the dots, but you can't, because you got to pay the mortgage every month. Dreams is being deferred, because you got to pay the mortgage every month. Businesses that you're supposed to be starting ain't starting. Because you checking in, going to work every day for nine to five. Because you're too scared to come out here in the real field of entrepreneurship and get busy. You're scared. And I ain't coming to make you rattle you and make you say, well, Dr. Anderson said I better start my own job, baby. So I'm going to jump out here and I'm going to be an entrepreneur Negro. I ain't saying that. Some of us don't need to be entrepreneurs. Some of us need to check in and be told what to do. But you still got to invest. You still got to get your kids through school without taking out student loans. Number two, thou shalt not have a car note. Thou shalt not have a car note. Who does that? Who does this? Well, Dr. Anderson, I, I didn't know you coming in here yelling at me. I don't appreciate that. Hold up. Drive time financial charges 48% interest. You going to tell me that's your option? Well, you know, CarMax gave me a loan. And they, went, they had the nerve to go through these Indians on the Indian reservation. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Do, 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 do. They got them commercials that be running on BET. Do, 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 do. Sky something financial. Do, do, do. You ever see the little, the interest rate, 99.9999%. Pay back in 45 days. Who's signing up for that? <laughs> Who does this? When we have solutions in the legal newspaper, it comes out and says that there's a public auto auction and cars will be sold to the public. Well, Dr. Anderson, you gotta have a dealer license. Keyword, public auto auction, right? What, is, what am I saying? Let me break this down for y'all. When Day Day and Jai John is driving down I-20 and they don't got insurance on that car and them disco lights go off, what happens? They get pulled over, the car, they go to jail, the car gets what class? And pound it. If Day Day and John John don't got money for insurance payment every month, they don't got money to go get the car. The car's sitting in the lot, $25 a day, 30 days a week. Come on, man. So what does the dude that tows the car, what does he do? He motions the court and says, I don't got time to do this. This is not why I got into business, judge. I need a court order to sell these 100 cars. The judge signs off on the final order for all of those cars. They give them a certain amount of time to respond. If the banks don't respond, guess what? There's a fire sale of cars without notes attached to them. Now you're going to tell me it's okay that the woman done been out working hard all day and this dude is still on the couch eating Fruity Loops when he could be out here driving for Uber and getting the car without no note. Come on. Yo, we coming with solutions, man. I know it hurts, black folks. Some people got to get, ooh, this is too strong. This, I need some cream with this because it's strong, pastor. This boy is strong. Help him, Jesus. Third one, third point. Thou shalt not have a mortgage. Thou shalt not have a car note. Thou shalt not have student loans. There was a report that came out in the AJC a couple of weeks ago of a black woman at 89 years old dying had a heart attack because the auto dialer was calling her all day and it stressed her out about a student loan that she had taken out 
almost 50 years prior. Google that. So now we in so much debt in our golden years, we dying. This thing's serious. Let's get to these solutions before I get out of here, man. Let me talk about 10 reasons to invest in Atlanta. 10 reasons. Not like you need one. I'm going to give you all 10. We started talking about the opportunity zones. We talked about the importance of the opportunity zones because investing in an opportunity zone gives you what? The tax credit, right? So if anybody in here owes the IRS, it's really not a problem, $100,000 or under. But if you start getting above one hundred. dollars 500,000, you know, you're not sleeping too good at night, right? So this is for that person who might not have raised their hand because they, they embarrassed or whatever. You can invest in the opportunity zone. It's right there. Let's talk about the Gulch. Anybody know about this Gulch project? All right. So y'all go down to the game, y'all tailgate, that whole area where y'all be tailgating for, go Falcons, I want my team to win. <laughs> but yet and still, what's his name? Arthur Blank. He done bought up Vine City, man. Spent 300 million of his own money buying up the hood. <laughs> but we down here tailgating. We eating that chicken, eating that watermelon. Don't own no land in the Gulch. Let me tell you what's happening in the Gulch. They spending 500 million dollars, right, to invest building skyscraper complexes. They talking about Facebook two headquarters coming over here. There was a bid in for Amazon and all this other stuff that's going on. Corporate um, technology companies have made Atlanta their destination, and the Gulch is the hot zone. The Gulch is the hot zone. Ain't nobody investing in it. Unbelievable. Hands in the air. Beltline project. Anybody know about this? The Beltline. 1999, Ryan Gravel wrote a thesis statement which stated that economics or infrastructure improves economic development. The thesis statement at Georgia Tech, Brian Gravel, 1999, doctorate thesis statement. The infrastructure impacts economic development. Somebody down at city council bought into it. Underneath the, uh, I want to go back to the Shirley Franklin administration, and then Shirley Franklin championed the bill to city council. Kasim picked it up and started to get hot, and now Keisha's in front of it. The belt line is gentrifying Atlanta, period. In fact, if you live in Southwest ATL, in what we call old school cascade, the president of the NPU number four, and I ain't talking about the West End, I'm talking deeper into cascade. I'm talking about John A. White Park, all right? The board of directors is white of that NPU. Now it's okay, I don't got nothing against white folks, but I understand that community is 99.99% black, and there's a white man at the NPU meeting. On the board, these are the issues that we need to get in front of, class, but we're not because we're going to the Jay-Z and Beyonce concert paying $5,000 to be in the front. We're not at the MPU meeting. Bellwood Rock Quarry, anybody seen Wakanda? Come on, man, you ain't seen Wakanda, you're going to lose your black card. Come on, Wakanda forever. Come on, class. The Bellwood Rock Quarry, zip code 30318. Hottest zip code in Atlanta. You got a tax problem, you could just dump money into the 30318 zip code. Why is this important? Because all trains lead to the Bellwood Rock Quarry, the same location that they shot Wakanda at, Wakanda Forever, where T'Challa fought against Killmonger. That same location is in Atlanta at the Bellwood Rock Quarry. And they're talking about transforming that into the biggest location for activities as it relates to entertainment. It is destination entertainment in Atlanta around an entire black community we not invest in. Can I keep going? Riverside Project. Everything from the Bellwood Rock Quarry all the way to the Chattahoochee is the 30318 zip code. And they're talking about gentrifying that whole area to the extent that the Chattahoochee will have scenic views over the river. Million dollar property in something right now that they used to call the hood. Million dollar property. MLK AUC District, 30314. Chick-fil-A went into the community and bought an entire block. Rick Ross talking about it's time to buy back the block. Chick-fil-A bought the block back. And in fact, there was a local black business directly across the street. Jay was from New York, got to Atlanta, 1993. Went to Morris Brown, wife went to Clark. They opened up a restaurant called what? 
Mr. Everything. And Mr. Everything happened to survive for 25 years without no issues. We selling all kinds of sandwiches. They was bringing health to the hood. And the moment, class, the moment Chick-fil-A opens up directly across the street, here come the fire marshal talking about y'all got to close because your building is unstructurally sound and it's the end of you. These are the effects of gentrification on businesses. This stuff just don't affect houses and grandma and grandpa's house. This stuff affects the businesses that have been in the community for years. We can't respond to it because we don't know what's going on. We're not investing. But Arthur Blank is investing. He's putting $350 million into the West Side Future Fund. He's putting his money where his mouth is because of the effects of the dome. But we tailgating. We not involved. We tailgating. Let me tell you about this Charlie Brown field. Y'all know what's up with Charlie Brown? I hate going through Hartsville, Jackson. I absolutely hate it. I hate taking my shoes off. I hate all of that. I like going to Teterboro. I like going to PDK. I like going to Charlie Brown. I like the plane running. I like the white folks looking, trying to be like, where's this guy at? Oh, it's this black guy over here. Oh, man. I love that. Right? So I'm doing real estate so I can have what, class? Gas for my plane. Okay? That's why I'm out here doing what I'm doing. Because I need gas. Class, come on. Gas. For my plane, <laughs> okay? And <laughs> let's just be clear on that. Let's understand what I'm talking about. Charlie Brown Field, UPS went and bought the whole western side of the airport. UPS said, we tired of going to Hartsville Jackson. They feel the exact same way that I do. But they got longer bread than I got. And so they went and bought the whole western side of the airport. To do what? To redirect their planes and not have to go to Hartsville Jackson because there's too much air traffic. So they said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to buy this area, UPS. We're going to land our planes. We're going to put in a distribution center to be able to do our sorts and put our packages on the road, and we out of here and re-up the plane, and the plane goes where it's got to go. That's the investment that UPS has made in Fulton Industrial, the same place, what they call the track, where they got them people out there working at 3, 4 in the morning. You know what I'm talking about, the track. UPS spent millions of dollars on the track. We go into the Jay-Z and Beyonce concert paying $5,000 to be at the Dome. We don't own nothing. Tyler Perry Studios, Fort Max, Sit Fearson. This dude bought the entire military installation. Didn't nobody know that Colin Powell's office was down 33 degrees below, 33 stories below was Colin Powell's office. Didn't nobody know that. They thought Colin Powell was in D.C. He was in Atlanta the whole time. And didn't nobody know it. Why? Because they was running no rad from there. Didn't nobody know until Tyler bought it and was like, what's this elevator go to? Let's check this out. This is interesting. And it's Colin Powell's office. Can you imagine that? that that's unprecedented to me, man. That all of this stuff was going on here in Atlanta. We didn't know nothing about it. You know why? Because we didn't know nothing. But Tyler owns it now, so good job, Tyler Perry. Why am I saying this? Tyler buys Fort McPherson. He's shooting more movies. He's getting... He's in an opportunity zone class. They say he spent 250 million. That's a write off for him. In addition to the film credits that he's working, almost 40%, and he's shooting movies over there. Tyler got it figured out. And we don't got to be on some Tyler Perry money. We could be doing these strategies on the low. Let me, hit, let me get through this right quick. Just be patient with me. They got something called the Aerotropolis class. Does anybody know what this Aerotropolis is? Oh, well, Dr. Anderson, what the Aerotropolis is, Dr. Anderson? This is an airport concept. It's a city within a city concept where people who don't really want to come to Atlanta, but they got to come to Atlanta for, quote, work, for the conference, now introducing the Aerotropolis on Godby Road in Phoenix Boulevard where you can fly in and not have to go into Atlanta but stay in the Aerotropolis. Anybody know who's on Godby Road in Phoenix Boulevard? My, I, call this, I call this character in my mind, Shining Shouted. And Shining Shouted be chilling on Godby Road like they right here, Dr. Anderson. What's up, dog? What's up, folk? What's up, Dr. Anderson? What's up? I see you on that TV, Dr. Anderson. What's up, folk? On Godby Road and Phoenix Boulevard. is Shining Shouted with a white T-shirt hustling in the middle of the day. And here come the Aerotropolis. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. But we got to learn. It's all right. We're going to learn tonight. We're going to learn tonight. The 10th reason that you should invest in Atlanta 
nine. Don't you hate that? <laughs> I love it. I love you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> you write the book. You don't put your heart and soul in the book. Dr. Anderson, you've got errors on page 97. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. This opportunity of the FIFA World Cup coming in 2027 is the biggest opportunity in the world. Y'all know about the FIFA Cup, right? This is, this is the International Soccer Championship. And they secured it at the Georgia Dome. See, y'all think that Arthur Blank loves y'all with this football stuff. Arthur done switched up the game. He ain't in the football business no more. He in the soccer business, man. That's why he built that dome. He ain't built that dome for them birds. Come on, y'all. Be real about this. Oh, I love my Falcons. I bleed red and black, Dr. Anderson. Come on, man. This dude's switching up the game on everybody and then ensuring that the FIFA Cup comes in six years. This is how they moving in our community, and we allowing it. The tenth reason, thank you, the tenth reason why we should invest in Atlanta is because this is ours. I'm not saying that we can't share, but class, I've been, God has blessed me to be able to go all around the world. We are living the best standard, the best quality, the best clothing, the best access to health care, the best housing, the best everything is here in Atlanta. The best. The best for black folks in the world. And we're going to just get us up? People looking at us everywhere. Man, I just got back a couple of months ago from Cairo. We shooting a new film in Egypt with Dr. Anthony Browder. Anthony Browder found the tomb of Karak Amun. And Karak Amun is one of the curators for all the lost knowledge in Egypt. This guy's tomb has all the lost pharaohs. Over 2,000 pharaohs is written in stone in this guy's tomb. And he's an African, a black man. And BBC, nobody's talking about this. NBC, CNBC, nobody's talking about this. But me, Mr. Roberts, and George Frazier had a trip. We went over there and followed Dr. Anthony Browder, and we recorded this. This is our history as Africans trapped in America. Y'all like, damn, you in film? One of the executive producers of Generation One. Y'all need to watch this. It's on Netflix. It's an awesome film. And then I did another film called Black Friday. We need to screen it here. Incredible. But we, you could go to YouTube. We can go on and on about that. Let me finish this right quick. So I want to say this. We have partnership opportunities. We can talk about the partnership opportunities if you're interested. I have my staff here tonight outside. I, don't, I didn't bring any books or any super merchandise, although one of my... Uh, Mentees is here, and he has a shirt called Black Entrepreneur. Black Entrepreneur is a T-shirt outside. So please support him. Q and uh, Jeremy are outside. Support their shirt. And if you have uh, interest in what we're doing in terms of partnership, we can talk about that more. You can give your information. If you want to get more information from me, you can text 58885. Text Ask Dr. Anderson to 5885. You can pull your phones out. And do that right now. Text Dr. Anderson to 5885. But as I close, I want to leave y'all with this information. Because this is a lot for me to get up here and do this. And, and everybody might not be on the same wavelength. But that's okay. Because this part of the presentation will get you there if you're not. All right? Will get you there if you're not. And, and how I got here, and let's be frank, I didn't go to Harvard. I didn't go to the B school at Harvard. Right? I barely got out of Morris Brown. Okay? Okay? However, I've had a solid 20 years of filing K1s and W2s and Schedule Cs. All right? And that's been quantified. That's how I got the honorary doctorate because of the, the, the history that I have in entrepreneurship and the things that I've done in my entrepreneurial career. But what I'm getting to, class, as I close, is that we're not reading enough. You don't got to go to Harvard. You don't got to go to the, the School of Business at Georgia State. We got to read. We got to read more. In fact, in Generation One, I made a side, sidebar comment talking about Negroes don't read. It was a T-shirt. My mama called me on the phone and was like, I don't like that shirt. We do read. We just don't read enough. So get them people the books that you read. That's what I'm going to do right now, mama, as we close. Second Machine Age. On the board right quick, we're going to run through this. Second Machine Age. This book is very important, especially for black folks. What it talks about is, an, is a gentleman named Eric Bajofson. Eric talks about in our economy that 
the swivel chair jobs will be extinct. This is based off of the fact that the government has entitlements set aside to be distributed in 2025 because according to their research, two-thirds of the current job market will be wiped out because of AI, robots. This, I'm, not sound, I'm not being an alarmist right now. I'm just telling you what's coming down the pipe. 2025, they're going to be issuing EBT cards because the robot done took your job. So you got to get, you got to get an understanding and it's not, it's not, uh oh, I'm going to lose my job. It's how can I use this robot to make my office more productive? How can I build a bot so that I can do more research so that my research team can be more effective? Not just here in Georgia in all 159 counties, but also in New York and also in uh, Virgin Islands and also in Chicago and also into Detroit. Everywhere in the United States, the bot is thinking, it's learning. It can learn at night while we're sleeping. I could get that data and that information and take it to my clients and tell them exactly where to place their funds so I'm not losing client money. That's what the bot is supposed to be used for. But when we don't know nothing about robots and artificial intelligence, we shy away from that. We say, oh, well, I don't know about them robots, Dr. Anderson. Read this book. The second book that I recommend is a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read this book. I remember the day that I read this book, 2006. Trump and Kiyosaki came to the dome at the Learning Annex. They had a big event. Everybody get excited about real estate and making money. I was the first black person in there waiting, excited. And then they said, it's $5,000 to see Mr. Kiyosaki. And everybody was like, Ugh. it was all the money that I had in the bank. I paid the money. I said, let me see Mr. Kiyosaki. Like I was going to go see the, the wizard. We get in the room, there's all kind of white folks in there, white men, a few white women, one or two other brothers, an African dude. Ask Mr. Kiyosaki your question. Never forget it. Mr. Kiyosaki, I have a question. You're right there. In your second book, Cash Flow Quadrant, in the second chapter, you said your first real estate purchase was a tax sale. And then you never said anything else about it. You said you and your wife, Kim, bought a tax sale in Hawaii. And in none of your other books, I read all of them, none of your other books did you ever talk about tax sales. Why is that? Security, we have a black man in the front. Can you get him out, please? Mr. Kiyosaki. Come on. Why are you going to tell us about everything else that you're doing to sell your product, but you're not going to tell us about how you got your money? I'm not stupid, don't play me. Play lotto. Actually, don't play lotto, it's not good for you. The odds are stacked against you, you'll never win. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a great read. The Dictionary of Real Estate Terms. Well, Dr. Anderson, I didn't go to college. I don't have all this expertise. I don't have all this. Stop it! You can learn a language in 72 hours. In fact, when we travel, I used to use my phone. We got this little interpretation thing. When you go to the country, I need to speak Arabic. <laughs> Arabic. <laughs> I need to speak Japanese. Moshi moshi. Onagashimasu do onaga. Hajime washite dojo yoroshiku da da. They got this technology, man. You can become whatever you need to become. The dictionary of real estate terms. The dictionary of finance terms precedes this book. We don't know the finance game, but we want to get into the real estate game. You can't do one without the other. The bank tells you, you want to buy a hotel. The bank tells you we could do 80% loan to value. And you might not have the cash, but you got the land free and clear. You might be able to use the land as your 20% injection of capital for the other 80. That's how we get hotels done. Don't nobody got, no, no black people got 200, 20% down on no 5 million. Come on, man, it's a million dollars sitting in the bank. Our economics are different. So if you don't have no knowledge of the finance terms, you can't speak the language. You can't speak money leads, it's a language. These white folks put it in a book, but we don't read it. So we're frustrated because we can't speak the money language. Black's Law Dictionary. Brothers need this. We be on the wrong side of the law every time. I go into the courthouse with a new dynamic, new paradigm of thought. 
because the court is a court of law set up as the plaintiff who's driving the action, and then you have the, the respondent, the defendant, in the, in the action of a position of weakness, not of authority. And that person loses because he can't speak the language. That's in this Black's Law Dictionary by Eric A. Gardner. This is a mandate for entrepreneurship. And I'll even say this. The same judge that gives time 20, 30, 40 years to these young brothers for smoking weed, of which Georgia's getting ready to become a gross state, right? The same judges that's been handing down time to send you down to Dooley County are the same judges that can set aside debt. Same judge that can write the final order to set aside HSBC, to set aside Bank of America, to set aside Deutsche Bank. Same judge. But we're on the wrong side. We're on the defendant side. We're not the plaintiff motioning against the bank to subdue them, to hit them with interrogatories and hit them with discovery and hit them with, do you even own this bank? Do you even own the promissory note? Show me the promissory note, Bank of America. Give me the forensic mortgage audit on all of the assignments that you have, Bank of America. Bring it to court. I'm giving you the protocols for quiet title actions in Georgia. You see me on the internet buying houses for a dollar and I'm setting aside the bank. How am I doing that? I just told you how to do it using the quiet title action here in Georgia. Setting aside debt from the bank only because we speak the language. The money language, the law language, the same language that they're using to send us down the road 30 and 40 years. That same language we're using to get the equity that we do because they're not paying us the 27 million that's owed. I want my 27 million. Georgia foreclosure and finance law. This is a CLE class, and I'm almost done here. I found myself in deep water, deep we couldn't even go back to get gas and turn the boat around. So I had to figure things out. I couldn't go back to law school. I didn't have the time to go sit at Georgia State and take out a loan and pay the professor and hope the professor knew how to move uh, quiet title actions or non-judicial and judicial foreclosures. I didn't have that kind of time. I needed to know this now. So I opted to take classes, what they call CLE classes, continued learning educational classes, specifically as it relates to quiet title actions in the state of Georgia, specifically in front of lawyers that have practiced law as it relates to real estate quiet titles and real estate law in Georgia, over 50, 60, 70, 100 years on a weekend class in a hotel. CLE classes given by the National Business Institute. How many black folks were in that class? It was the only one. Me and my assistant. I've written a book called The No Mortgage Strategy. We can talk more about that outside in the back. Another book that I want to recommend heavily is called The Creature from Jekyll Island. In 1930, right here in Georgia, in the Sea Islands, the Adderhall family, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, they all got together at Sea Island and they wrote the International Code for the IRS, 1913. Read the book. This is the history of economics in our country is in this book. I don't have time to go through the importance of this. Real estate tax strategies, if you're unclear on how to use the self-directed IRAs, this guy in 78 pages explains it on a third grade reading level. He shows you, class, how to raise money. I didn't know how to raise money until I read that book. I was running around hoping that people would see me and hoping that people would say, oh, this guy's smart. Let me try to invest. I didn't understand how to raise funds, raise capital until I read this book. This guy laid out the protocol for capital investment on private sides. This is the information we need. This is why I'm giving it at the end of the class. Laptop Millionaire, written by Mark Anastasi. Some of us don't need to be real estate investors. We don't have the temperament to deal with all of the issues that come along with real estate. So guess what? You can use your laptop. You can use your laptop to make millions of dollars. And Mark Anastasi wrote a book. And Mark Anastasi, if you know who he is, he's claimed the fame as he's made between eight, I think it's nine million dollars monthly on different websites that he's created and drove traffic to. 
Let me share a secret with y'all. My agent, well, excuse me, almost broker now, my, my real estate broker, even when, she, even when Nicole lists a house, it doesn't guarantee that house is going to sell. Okay? Nicole can list all of the houses in the portfolio. We manage almost $15 million of real estate down at the office. She can list all of the houses in the portfolio. Guess what? Ain't nobody going to call until what, class? Until we spend that $500 with Facebook and Instagram to get between 27,000 and 35,000 eyeballs on that house. That phone ain't ringing until that happens. What am I saying? I'm saying that traffic generation, SEO, marketing on the internet of whatever product it is, is really the business game. That's the game of business. Marketing. Ain't nothing happening without marketing. And this guy, Anastasi, lays it all out. He lays out how to do it. Becoming your own banker, R. Nelson Nash. This white man's concept is so powerful, he believes that you should not, listen to me, you should not put your money in a bank. He believes that you should put it in what? Insurance. I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole other conversation. They're going to have to bring me back for a breakout session for that. Come on, man. You hit the closing table and there's 500000 on the on the table, a capital gain. I'm not putting that in Bank of America. Come on, man. I'm not doing that. I'm putting it in the insurance policy. So next time we got to go write, do a film, I can take a loan against the insurance and go do the film, put the film out, sell it to Netflix, let y'all buy it and stream it, and get 250, 500,000 downloads, and then take the money back, put it back in the insurance policy, and not have to pay taxes on it. Oh, this boy real smart. I'm not smart. I read the book. It's in the book. Well, Dr. Anderson, you got a Series 6, Series 7? You really know what you're talking about. Read the book. It's in the book. Profits in the Stock Market, H.M. Gartley. This is a rare book. I spent $1,000 on this book. One point in my entrepreneurial career, I was running around trying to figure it out. We all trying to figure it out. I'm in a good space right now. Opportunities come, I'll be like, people come in the office, somebody was like, I got $10 million for you, white man. I was like, I'll call you back. The, the girls in the office was like, oh. <laughs> It's like, man, I don't want to do that. I'll call you back. I'll get back to you. That's a great space to be in as an entrepreneur when you could choose the opportunities that you want to get involved with. But a number of years ago when I wasn't in the position that I'm in now, I was searching, trying to figure it out. We all do this. We all go through this stage. And I thought that Forex was the way to do it. So in my mind, I want to, I want to figure it out. I want to figure out how to do the Forex game. And in the Forex world, Profits in the stock market is the standard. That is the standard for how to enter into the market. Now get this class. This is the second to last book. Get how important this is. Profits in the stock market, H.M. Gartley, if you know anything about how his positioning is, he was heavily influenced by an Italian gentleman named Fibonacci, which is the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence deals with patterns and zeros, number ones and zeros and binary patterns. And everything in the earth, everything in the world is on patterns. Even the growth of food and plants and people that have agricultural knowledge, they deal with patterns. And Fibonacci's sequence was heavily influenced by an African named Imhotep. And I didn't learn this until I was on a camel with Michael Roberts and George Frazier and my daughter, which is also on the internet, on my way to the Great Pyramids in Giza filming with Dr. Anthony Browder. It didn't hit me that Brother Imhotep is not just the father of medicine, but he is the father of natural finance. Because Brother Imhotep influenced who? Fibonacci. Fibonacci influences who? It's the basis of how you enter and exit the market. That's what's in profits in the stock market. That's how H.M. Gartley used the harmonic scanner to tell him which way to go. What am I saying, class? I'm saying that white folks, while we're sleeping, are taking profits in the stock market using African uh, technology and African science and methodologies, and you're not benefiting. Heavy. We're not benefiting. We're not even in the market. We don't even know what the indicators mean. This is why this book is so important. Let me finish with this. Self-directed IRA handbook. We started off the class with that. Another self-directed IRA book written by Richard Deitch, 
who happens to be the owner of a company called uh, Equity Trust, which is one of our beneficiary companies, and I end on this. The power of zero. David McKnight. I had the pleasure of uh, attending the self-directed IRA conference last year. Went to the conference with a problem. I was like, oh, I owe the IRS, I owe the IRS all this money. This is before we went to NABHood and learned about the EDC credit. It was before we got with the Kwanzaa Hall and the, the city of Atlanta and Invest Atlanta sat me down and explained to me how the Opportunity Zones, this is before all of this information came about. And at this conference, this white boy presented information on something called a Roth IRA constellation. Now, I think I know a little bit of information, but I ain't never heard nobody talk about a Roth IRA constellation. Why is this important? Because class, they talk, this whole entire conference was built off the premise of how you can use the Roth IRA, teachable moment. The IRS will allow you to put $5,500 in the Roth IRA. I put $5,500 in my Roth IRA. I go buy a tax lien in Decatur or in Fulton County. I wait 12 months. I bring the tax lien to market. I sell it. I make $100,000. It goes back into the Roth IRA tax-free. Ain't never heard nothing like that till I went to the self-directed IRA conference. Ain't nobody told me that. Hold on, it gets crazier. HSA account, okay? Because the health savings account. The, the government says you could put $6,800, fact check me, $6,800 into the HSA account. Guess what you could do with that? Go down to the courthouse, buy a tax lien, bring, wait 12 months, clear all encumbrances the title, bring it to market, sell it, make $100,000. It goes back into the what? HSA account. Why is that important? Because now I can go get the super cheap insurance with the $5,000, $10,000 deductible. Why? I don't care because if I got to go to the hospital, I got $100,000 sitting right here in the HSA account to pay for it. So now I'm saving money. I'm not paying $3,000 a month to cover my family. I could be paying five hundred. dollars Why? Because my HSA account is juiced up. Ain't nobody telling black people that. We don't even have insurance because we can't afford the premium. But we're not using these strategies. You know what else they said? They said that for, for me, I would also get a $12,000 deduction on every employee that I funded. So if I give my staff incentives and say, here's 12 dollars for the year, great job, and they put in 12 dollars for the year, I can write that off through the SEP, the self-employment program. I mean, the conference is unbelievable. But why is all this important? It's because I learned about this conference reading this book, The Power of Zero. And this concept, these white people believe that they should not pay taxes because they're pushing everything in their lifestyle down to the 0% tax bracket. And they're showing you in this book how to take the losses to be able to do that legitimately. The power of zero. They have power of zero conferences. We don't know about this because we're not reading enough. So I, I love y'all, man, and I, and I don't hear me. I'm not yelling at us. I love us. I'm, I'm yelling because I'm tired of us not getting what it is that we need to be successful. I'm a My dad had all these big ideas. It drive my mom crazy. My dad is a writer. He, would, he wrote these um, a sitcom in New York called Sha Na Na back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Ran on NBC. It was a big, big show. And my dad would, um, he would write, he would write for the show. And, and this guy named Denny Green would come in the house and be pumping my dad for ideas. Oh, David, this is great. What are we going to do next week? And my dad would write it all out and give it to Denny. And Denny would go down to CBS. And like two weeks later, we'd be watching it on the same TV in the kitchen. We'd be watching exactly what dad said. We'd be watching that on the TV. So this was going on for a couple episodes. And like one of the episodes, my mom was cooking. And, you know, everybody was like, Sha-na-na coming on. You know, we got to go to the TV and watch. You know, this is your dad. This is what he's doing. But on this particular night, my mom wasn't really excited 
She was cooking like, mm-hmm. You gonna see this show? Mm-hmm. And as soon as the show came on, my mom said, where's the royalty check? You know how, come on, man. I'm just saying, you know, ladies, I know y'all love us, but y'all give us this, this, uh, the sands of time. And some of y'all will say, okay, Negro, you got clock ticking. Go ahead and go. And you got to figure it out. You don't figure it out before that thing runs out. It's done. They leave, you know, all of this type of stuff. So this is what was going on in the house at the time. My dad couldn't figure it out. My dad couldn't say, hey, man, hold up. We need to get this contract so I can get these royalty coins so I can take care of my family. Right? So no knock on my father. I love my father. I love my mama. But what I learned from that situation is that we can't just have big ideas. We got to learn how to finance our ideas. It's our responsibility, not our parents' responsibility, not my cousin's responsibility, not my homeboy's responsibility, not the bank's responsibility. If somebody puts something on your heart to put out a radio network 24 hours, seven days a week, that informs black people about their finances, then you gotta figure out how to get that done, period. And it's in these books. It's in the reading, and what's the book say? Study to what? Show yourself. Show, show yourself approved. We not studying hard enough. We don't want it hard enough, we say, we want success. We say we want to be successful, but we don't. We say we want it. We're not ready to sleep in the car. We're not ready to eat ramen noodles. We're not ready to go and pick the kids up at whatever time the mom says when it's supposed to be 4 o'clock and you did at 3.59 and she ain't opening the door. Come on, man. And you fighting that for 15 years? I'm just saying, how bad do you want it, class? How bad do you want it? So my message tonight is, listen, people, I love y'all, but stop with all these excuses. Stop it right now. No more excuses. You know what it is that God has told you to do? You know what you're supposed to do. I just told y'all how to raise millions of dollars for free. I didn't even charge no consultation fee because I love my people. People pay me 15 5 to do this. I will do this all day, every day for my people because we need this. This is why we're not successful, not because we're stupid. Ain't nothing wrong with us. We built the pyramids. I was there. Come on. They said because they said of climate change, there's a new pyramid in Antarctica, 100 times bigger than the one in Giza. They say it's 40 million years old, plus. And guess what? I bet you when you go down there, it's some comedic symbols on a bidet that say Negro's been here. That's what that stuff, that's what it mean. Black folks was here. That's what it mean. So my message tonight is very simple. Stop. Stop with the indictments. That's the devil, man. The enemy comes to rob, to kill, and to destroy, to disrupt the thinking that God has given you to become the creative people that you're supposed to be. That's the enemy talking in your head telling you, you can't do that. You're not good enough to make that happen. Stop that. Who told you you can't? Who told you this? Who told y'all? We got everything we need to be successful, people. Everything. And if we taking God for his word, for what he really talking about, I came to give you life and for you to have it more abundantly. That's God's word, man. That's him talking. That's not me. What does that mean? Abundance, the abundant life. Oh, Dr. Anderson, I wanna have the abundant life. Come on, man. Are you doing the abundant work? Are you being diligent on what it is that you did? It's okay to make mistakes. I've made mistakes, lost money, you know what I'm saying? But I still gotta figure it out. I got an obligation to the clients to figure it out. You understand? So we got to do this. We got to be on that same grind, man. That same, that same, I got to figure it out. We not figuring it out. We saying, oh, I ran into a stumbling block. What happened with your business, brother? Oh, well, you know, the economy dropped. Forget that, man. Economy don't got nothing to do with your business. It's not contingent upon that. 
It's a contingent upon the information that you have. That's what this is about. We in the information age. So I love y'all. I thank you, Jamal, for the opportunity that you've given me to come into your house and to speak. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, for, um, for, for calling Jamal. And thank you, Hashim, for making the connection. Uh, thank you, Quincy, uh, to my family, to my wife, for putting up with my indiscretions and my foolishness, man. You know, I appreciate the support system that I've built. I appreciate the support system that Atlanta has given me to be able to do and talk about these things that we've done over the past 15 years. So I'm thankful and, and, I, and I pray that, um, that God comes into your house. Allow God to come into your house. Allow these words to come into your house and to affect everyone in every home as y'all depart. To affect every home and go in and give y'all the abundance. Give you the wealth and give you what it is that you need to be successful. It don't have to be millions of dollars. But it de definitely don't have to be somebody calling you from 7 a.m. to midnight talking about you owe them some money. So I, I pray that prayer, man. Amen. Come on, give Dr. Anderson an amazing applause. Were you blessed? Did you learn anything? Appreciate his heart and grateful uh, for his spirit and his uh, selflessness. Come on, give him another applause. Thank you so much, Dr. Anderson. You may be seated. We're getting ready to close in just one moment. Uh, I hope that you all write those books down. Amen. I hope that you're going to get them. I hope that you're going to read them. I hope you're going to study them. Uh, Dr. Anderson, you are engaging, informing. Uh, and enlightening, but I said, if he take off another piece of clothes, I'm going to lose my job. Uh, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm grateful for him. Uh, very quickly, uh, Brother Hunt, if you'll come help us 